Welcome. On this video, we will be proving geometrical relationships. Let's start by looking at example number one. What we want to do in example number one is we want to prove something that we're going to refer to as the right angle congruence theorem. What does the right angle congruence theorem says? It says that if we are given two right angles, in this case, angle one and angle two, then those two angles are congruent to each other. And maybe just looking at this figure, you might be saying, I mean, what is there to prove? Like, it's very self-explanatory. If angle one, it's a right angle, it has 90 degrees. And angle two, it's a right angle, then it has 90 degrees. They both have the same measurement, then they are congruent to each other. So we're done. What is there to prove? Well, that's actually how we're going to be proving this. We need to sit down and write down our logical reasoning using a statement and reason table. So let's actually just formalize what we have just said there. Let's formalize the proof. How do we start? We always start the same way. Just write down the given angle one and angle two are right angles. So again, this is just a given. We always start that way. And now let's think about this. If angle one and angle two are right angles, then I think it's fair to say that angle one has a measurement of 90 degrees and angle two has a measurement of 90 degrees as well. What's the reason behind it? Well, this is how we define right angles. So a definition of right angles. And at this point, we're pretty much done. Because let's think about this. And again, what I'm gonna write down here in green, it's not to the proof, but I want for you to think about this. We are saying that angle one is congruent to 90 degrees, but also angle two is congruent to 90 degrees. So I think it's fair to say that angle one is congruent to angle two. But look at the property that we are using here. We are using a transitive property. So that's how we're gonna finish this up. My third step is that angle one is congruent to angle two. And again, the reason behind it, it is transitive property. And again, very important, notice that the last statement within my statement and reason table, it is the statement that I wanted to prove. Angle one and angle two are congruent to each other. And notice that every single step that we took here, there was always a reason to back it up. And this is what we refer to as a right angle congruence theorem. If you have two angles that they're right angles, then they're congruent to each other. Let's take a look at one more example here. What we want to do in this example is to prove what we refer to as a congruent supplement theorem. What does the congruent supplement theorem says? It says, look, if you are being given two supplementary angles, angle two and angle one is a supplementary angle, angle two and angle three are supplementary angle, then there are going to be two angles that are going to be congruent to each other, angle one and angle three in this case. Now let's think about how are we going to prove this. First of all, we want to start our proof. And the way that we always start our proof is by writing down the given. So let's just write down the given. What is that we are given? Angle one and angle two are supplementary angles. And the same can be said about angle three and angle two. They are supplementary angles. Good. This is a given. Now, what should we do next? Well, if angle one and angle two are supplementary, then I know that if I add them up, they are equivalent to 180. So angle one plus angle two is equivalent to 180. And also the same can be said about angle three and angle two. Because remember, that's the definition of supplementary angles. Angles which are said to be supplementary, they are equivalent to 180. Now, notice that 
Angle 1 and angle 2, it's equivalent to 180. Angle 3 and angle 2, they are equivalent also to 180. So the addition is equivalent to the same number. Then therefore, we can say that angle 1 and angle 2 is equal to angle 3 and angle 2. Because they are both equal to the same value. So perhaps that's something that we can say now. Angle 1 plus angle 2, it is equivalent to angle 3 plus angle 2. And this is just substitution. Notice what's going on here. We have angle two on the left hand side of the equation and angle two on the right hand side of the equation. We can treat this as an equation and we can use all the different properties that we have of an equation. Well, what if we would have subtracted angle two on both sides? If we would have subtracted angle two from both sides, then notice that we have that angle one is equal to angle three. And this is nothing more than subtraction property. Now, there's a small mm, technicality going on here. The way that we wrote this down, we are using an equal sign. But notice that we want to prove it's a congruent sign. So even though we are using an equality, it is okay for us to just call it off as a congruency because they essentially mean the same. Why is this important? The importance about this is that the last statement that you have within your proof should be the last or should be the statement that you want to prove. Notice that if we would have left it out as a equality here, let's say we would have left it as an equality here, they don't match. Because my proof is finishing with an equal sign where I wanted to have my proof to be finished with a congruent sign. So notice the difference between these two here. Here, we're finishing our proof with a equal where we wanted to finish it with a congruent sign. So that's the reason as to why at the end, we're just going to switch this to an equality. So now they match up. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.